Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol content video, which today I will be talking about wearing the ABU uniform. This also talks about a little bit with the BDU uniform, but it is being phased out in June of 2021, which is in a little over a year. So some people are still wearing BDUs, but a majority of members are buying ABU uniforms or they are getting ABU uniforms to wear for utility purposes. So we're going to jump into how to wear the uniform. There are different components to the uniform, including what you should be wearing before you put the uniform on, and then additional components to follow. So first, you need to be wearing a tan t-shirt to go under your uniform. So this is, this is what's called an undershirt. And if you want to buy like specific Air Force ones, they do have them. They're a little bit better fitting. It just needs to be a tan shirt underneath your ABU blouse. Additionally, you will need some black socks in order to wear on your feet. In terms of other undergarments, it's totally up to you, but I typically wear lighter colored undergarments underneath this tan shirt and it, it doesn't matter what you wear down there because you're wearing pants and you're always going to wear your pants. The other components that go into an ABU uniform is the belt, which I have attached right here. I haven't actually taken it off my pants because I'm about to put them on for you guys. Don't worry, I am wearing pants. I'm wearing my Adidas pants, don't worry. And then these are the actual pants themselves. These are the female style pants, which means they button up the opposite way of what a normal button up shirt or button up pants would have, which means that this left side is where the buttons are located versus the right side, which is what normal pants have and what the male style of the uniform has. Additionally, you will need a pair of black boots. My boots are Rocky brand and I got them eh, like three or four years ago and they've been holding up pretty well through like encampments and other activities. There are a lot of different brands out there. Just get what's comfortable for you and look at the price range. Don't get super cheap boots though, because if you get super cheap boots, most of them fall apart very quickly. And if you get leather boots, they're better for shining or like cleaning because they're just like easier to wear in, I guess, than some shoes. But um, these, these are actually like, kind of like a plasticky kind of shoe and they work very well for me. You don't necessarily have to have your boots shined. They used to, they used to have a requirement for boots being shined. But at this point, they just want you to make sure that you're keeping them clean, so they shouldn't be splattered with mud or anything like that. But you will need a pair of black boots to wear with those black socks that I showed you earlier. Additionally, you will need a cap. So there are a lot of different sizes because people have different head sizes. So just make sure that before you get the cap, you know what head size you have. So if you have a measuring tape for the circumference of your head, then go ahead and measure that out. And then on the inside of the cap, it'll always tell you what size is the cap and there's normally like a chart online that you can look at that says like this is the size you need if you are this circumference and then you can just try it on and go from there so my mine fits snugly and it's supposed to be worn where this is parallel to the ground and it's about two fingers from the bridge of your nose but that that is not supposed to be worn inside it's supposed to be worn only outside because it's supposed to cover your head when you're not covered by a roof or a ceiling then last but not least we have our delightful abu blouse now you'll notice there are a few different things on here and i'll describe what each of them are so this is the insignia so this is what grade you are so on here this is a senior member captain grade and if you are a cadet, I'll show you how to do like the pinning on a little bit later in this video. It's not quite yet, but I want to just talk about each of the components of the uniform. So if you look here, my, my right has my name tape and the left has Civil Air Patrol. And you always want to make sure that your name is on the right side, Civil Air Patrol is on the left. Then if you have a wing patch, which you should, then it will be on your left shoulder okay so if you think about how you would be wearing it this side will be your name tape this side will be civil air patrol okay and then you can have additional badges on top of your civil air patrol and then like this is the emergency services patch which you can have above your name you can also have patches on these four pockets 
and there are regulations on how to properly put those on, which I will include in the link in the description. It is CAP Regulation 39-1. So that is just something to keep in mind. This is this is for air crew and this is for ground team leader. So if you ever want to do emergency services qualifications, you can get badges on your uniform that show what you are qualified with. Something I had not mentioned is that there are different colors of name tapes and tapes on the uniforms. So right here I have two different uniforms. I have the BDU and the ABU. Now you'll see here that these are a lighter blue color and then these are darker blue. Only the darker blue tapes are authorized on ABU, but both darker blue and lighter blue are authorized on BDUs if you have them. A lot of people don't have BDUs at this point because it's phasing out, but that's just something to know if you're looking at name tapes and you see like, hey, this is a pretty lighter blue. Maybe I should get it for my ABUs. Don't do that, don't do that. Just get the dark blue because that's the only thing authorized here. I put tape over my name tape so you can't see my name but uh, that, that's the only reason why they're both lighter blue on the two uniforms. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about how to put on insignia for an NCO or a cadet airman in an ABU uniform. Okay, so here I have my ABU blouse, which is not mine. It is one from an airman's attic, which is something on an Air Force base where it's, it's basically like a thrift shop and the one in my area allows Civil Air Patrol members to go to the airman's attic. They can get five free big, like large uniform pieces like pants or like the blouses and for free. So it's very nice and it's an awesome deal. So right here I have one of the insignia placed for a Cadet Chief, Master Sergeant, First Sergeant and I'm gonna put the frogs on. So there are different components to the insignia. There are the frogs which are these little metal pieces on the back that help keep it on the blouse. And then there's the actual insignia itself. What you're gonna need if you're doing your insignia is you will need a ruler and the insignia with the frogs. So I typically like hanging it up somewhere, like on my door and then putting the insignia on using the rulers. However, since I do not have something to hang up with, I will be using my desk here. So you want to just make sure that you're laying the blouse flat on whatever surface it is, and you are going to measure with your ruler one inch from the edge of your collar. Okay, so once you've done that, you measure one inch from the edge of the collar. So this is the edge of the collar right here, and I have measured one inch. One of the things that you need to make sure you do is when you place your insignia, it needs to be parallel, so parallel with the edge of the collar. So I have my one inch measured, and then I'm going to place my insignia up one inch along that ruler. Once you have placed it in the correct position or you think it's right, you will look and compare the two different insignia to make sure they're both parallel with the edge and measured one inch. Now, sometimes the insignia might shift a little bit, so like mine is diagonal just a little bit, so I'm gonna move this one edge just a little, and then I will reconfirm with my ruler that it is indeed still one inch. I'm not tall enough. One inch from the edge. Another thing that I did not mention is that it needs to be centered in your collar. So it should be equidistant between the two different edges right here. The hardest one to do is probably like the Cadet Airman insignia because you only have a tiny, tiny single stripe, which makes it more challenging to kind of match and make sure that it's parallel with the edge of the collar. So like <laughs> the higher up in grade you get, the easier it is because you can see like very clearly that the edge is lined up with the the edge of the insignia is lined up with the edge of the collar. Okay, so now I'm going to put together all of the different pieces of the uniform and put it on just so you will see what it looks like. So ready? Okay, so that completes the uniform. I normally wouldn't wear a cover 
inside, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And th the same rule applies for the insignia. So you can see that my insignia is lined up one inch from the bottom of the collar. And it's, it's pretty simple to do with officer ranks because you just sew them on and then you never have to take them off until you get promoted again. So I know that can be a little frustrating with some of the cadet officer ranks, but Hey, once, once you become a senior member, it's a lot easier, right? One thing I did not mention is blousing bands. So something that I like to use on the bottom of my pant leg is something called blousing bands, where essentially, I'm gonna use my sleeve as an example, you take the blousing band and you put the blousing band around your ankle. In this instance, I'm doing it around my wrist just so you can see how it works. And let's say that the pant leg is really wide and it's hanging loose around your leg. Normally you're not supposed to have unbloused pants. Some people they just stuff the bottom of the pant leg into the pants, but with a blousing band you can make it look a lot cleaner. Don't do this with your sleeves. When you have your own blousing band, do this with the bottom of your pants, but you're going to take the bottom of your pants and wrap it underneath that blousing band so that it's snug and tight. So it'll look like this, but on your leg. Okay, so that's how a blousing band works. Can't really show off my legs right now because uh, the camera doesn't go there and I don't have multiple cameras. I'm not that high tech, but you need two, oop, two blousing bands. They're really cheap and they're very easy to use. So just wrap it around your ankle and then curl the edge of the pants around the entire blousing band in order to get a really awesome bloused pants. One final thing about boots is that you cannot have snakes coming out of your boots. Now what do I mean when I say that? Boots have really long laces and you want to make sure that the shoelace does not stick out of the pants at all when you are using them. So make sure you tuck in the excess of the, the shoelace. So having these just like this, like let's say I'm already wearing this, having these just dangling out is not within standards. So I typically would wrap the axis around and then tuck in. But it's really hard to demonstrate when it's not on my legs because these are shoes and they're not brands. So that summarizes all of my information for the ABU and BDU uniform. The same information applies for the BDU uniform. It's just the light blue name tapes are still authorized for those and the BDU is being phased out in June, 2021. If you have any questions for me about anything in this video or other Civil Air Patrol content in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and that is all folks. Until next time, doodles.